All right, what's going on, you fam? You did here. We got the data download, and the new characters as well as equipment are now in the game. Uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, which you should do, uh, we saw some of the previews for the new characters and their animations, and holy crap! I just gotta say, Legends has nailed it when it comes to these animations. The dynamic camera, their animations. You would think these guys are anniversary characters. They look great. Very excited. So Captain Ginyu is a purple type. Stats wise, he is a melee type with a revival. Post revival is very similar to his prior revival, but nonetheless, not a big deal. Uh, remember to take away 13,000 from all the stats because when you click the display maximum stats, it's also applying the, um, the boost system. Let's go ahead and see what our boy does. So standard strike and blast, blue card, massive impact damage. Following effects occur on hit. You get 10% chance for your revival. Obscure all enemy cards to five counts. And blast summer when charging forward. Okay, there's no like, you know, 30% blue card damage. There's no, um, you know, nullify endurance or anything like that. It looks like you're really just gunning for revival, I guess. Green card, randomly draw a new card. Restore 50 key, 30% strike damage inflicted. Plus 10% to revival chance. Reduce the enemy key by 50 and do the two sub count debuff. All right. So main ability, randomly destroy one of your cards to draw a special move. You get a 15% damage inflicted buff. You get 50 key, take away uh, own attribute downgrades that are normal conditions and you buff your revival chance by 20%, no biggie. Z ability, 35% to Guinea force or freeze the saga or freeze the force. Base, strike attack and defense and an additional 18% blast attack if you are freeze the saga. Now as passives, so by default he has a 30% chance to revive into Goku. No big deal, heal 100%. Reduce enemy key by 70 if the revive fails. Apply the following effects to self when the battle starts. 90% damage inflicted. 65% reduced damage received. So it looks like 60% has been kicked off the average now. We are now up to 65%. He has card draw speed with 50% key recovery, so that's already looking pretty good. Applies the following effects to self. Ginyu Force or Episode Frieza Saga Z battle member other than himself in the party. 20% damage inflicted, so up to 40% because you got two other battle members not including himself with another 20% key recovery and another 20% revival chance as well as a he can have up to minus two sub count to himself which is pretty good. So 130% right out the gate with uh, what are we looking at 90% key recovery. That is pretty damn good. Applies the following effects to self each time this character uses a striker blast, restore 3% health and gain 5 key, and stack up 15% damage inflicted. This is a really strong passive. Um, a lot of you have noted that Yellow Cell is really damn strong, and the reason why he's strong is because he restore he gains 20% damage inflicted every time he uses a strike or a blast. So a modern character like Captain Ginyu getting something like this, really really good. Subordinates Trust, second passive, he has a cover change against Strike Attack, and you can chain it with the blue. Whenever he vanishes, he destroys one of his cards and gets a green card. Only happens once. Restores 30 key, ups his revival chance by 15%, lowers ally sub count by 2. And when he shows up on the field, he restores 20 key, 50% damage inflicted, an additional 30% to revival chance per defeated battle member. Effects reset after switch. And then applies the following effects to self according to the number of time it counts elapsed since the beginning. After 20 counts, he gets another 50 key. After 40 counts, he heals 20%. After 60 counts, he gets level 2 card draw speed. Ginyu really can be a spooky unit. Normally, I'm not really fond of these, uh, you know, oh, you gotta wait 30 time recounts, 40 time recounts, 50 time recounts, passives. But I think for a, for a revival character, it's okay. Just because you got two lives. But Captain Ginyu... Looks a little bit scary. So 90% from here, 40% from the battle members, so 130. He's able to stack up 15% for every strike or blast that he uses. Keeping in mind that it doesn't have to land, he just has to use it. So 130%, he gets 50% for showing up on the field. And then he has like 140% key recovery with all his passives and can have up to level 2 card draw speed and can stack up 15% damage inflicted. He's looking kind of scary. 
Post revival. Let's see. What's new? Strike and blast are the same. Blue card. Massive explode damage. Applies the following effects upon hit. Destroy all cards. Oh, destroys all your enemies cards. Okay, the wording was weird. Cancel enemy attribute upgrades and buff effects. Pretty good. Is green card. Randomly draw a new card. Get 50 key. Inflict all enemies with the attribute downgrade plus 30% of damage received for 10 counts. They have a minus one card draw speed debuff for 10 counts and minus 100% to health restore debuff for 10 counts. Put a nifty green card. Min ability gives them a blue card. Gets 50 key. 20% damage inflicted for 20 timer counts. Increases his own arts card draw speed by one level for 20 counts. Cancels attribute downgrades that are normal conditions. So Captain Ginyu. After 60 timer counts, post revival with this main can have a level 3 card draw speed with the 190% key recovery. Oh, sorry, was it? Yeah, it was some, some absurd amount of key recovery. That's very strong. Um, upon revival, 50% damage inflicted, minus 5 to strike and blast cost, which is kind of scary given how high his key recovery is. Plus, the following effects to self when the character shows up on the field. Randomly draw a new card if you have three or fewer. You get 30 key. Your blue card damage goes up by 50%. And like before, he gets five, uh, gets five key. 50% damage inflicted for every strike or blast card that he uses. But he gains the ability to randomly destroy one enemy card. Very similar to the yellow Shampa. Very good. Still has the strike cover change and when he shows up on the field. Oh, actually, the following effects occur when enemy switches characters while this character is on the battlefield. Restore 30 key. Restore own vanish by 50%. Reduce enemy key by 30. I like that. The LF Broly, LF Corrupt, Merge the Masu passive. And then, similarly to before, he still has that passive there. You know, after 20 counts, 50 key. 40 counts, restore health by 20%. After 60 counts, it gets the card draw speed. Captain Ginyu looks pretty strong, and uh, I think his a little bit lower than average offensive stats are just meant to align with that. But no big deal, looks like a strong kit. Next, we got Raccoon and his buddy Goldo. Defense type unit, let's see what the stats look like. Yeah, look, what is that blast defense? What? Okay. So as Raccoon, he's got blast armor on the strike, standard blast, blue card, massive explode damage. Plaza Funnel effects 2 self upon activation, 20% damage inflicted for 15 timer counts with a 20% blue card damage. Destroys all of your cards and randomly draws 3 new ones. Green card draws a strike, restores on health by 10% and key by 50 with another 20% damage inflicted buff while also reducing the enemy key by 50. In ability, tax switch to Goldo, switches on element to element green. You're guaranteed to draw a blast card. You heal 10% of your health and get 30 key with a 20% damage inflicted buff while destroying an enemy card. Z ability is double defense, uh, but if you satisfy the additional condition being a Frieza Saga uh, episode character, you get 18% strike attack. Let's see. Applies the following effects to allies if there is a tag Ginyu Force or Episode Frieza Saga battle member other than this character in the party when the battle starts. I should have got a cup of water. Holy crap. The modern characters have like giant paragraphs in all their kits now. But he's also a support character. If you satisfy the conditions, you get a 15% damage inflicted buff for 30% key recovery. Applies the following effects to self when this battle starts or when this character enters via a tag switch. So 80% damage inflicted, 50% strike damage inflicted, 70% to reduce damage received. Damn. Minus 10 to strike guards cost with plus 20% to help the store. Obviously it resets when he tanks, which is out. When he shows up on the field, restore 30 key, type neutral uh, damage received. So very good. Really satisfies that, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a defense type. Seal the enemy green card. Green cards can't be used for five counts. Applies the following effects to self every time an enemy, uh, and when hit by an enemy's arts attack while this character is on the field. Restore 2% of your HP, but uh, five times you restore 3%. Activation count resets when attack switch is performed. So if you go to Godo and you go back to Raccoon, you can restore that additional 3% five times. Pretty good. Uh, cover change against strike cards, chainable with the blue. Applies the following effects to self every time this character uses a strike blast or special move. 15% to damage inflicted for 5 counts, 30% to crit rate for 3 counts, applies the attribute upgrade minus 
to enemies sustain damage cut effects with three counts. So they just want you to chain your cards, it looks like. Just rapidly go for them because you only get three timer counts. But that's enough to get yourself minus 45% to enemy sustain damage cut effects. <sighs> the following effects also occur every time this character uses a strike card. 15% damage inflicted. So 30% damage inflicted whenever you use a strike card. Shorten ally sub count by two. Activates once. Tag switch resets. The following effects occur upon landing a strike hit. Restore own health by 3% and key by 5. Inflict all enemies with attribute downgrade minus 15% to key recovery for 10 counts. The following effects occur when an enemy activates an ultimate arts, awakened arts, or rising rush. If there are two Ginyu Force battle members other than this character in the party, shorten ally sub count by 5. Uh, effect activates even if this character is defeated. Inflicts enemy with attribute downgrade minus 40% to ultimate and awakened arts power for 3 counts. Even if they're dead, it still activates. Definitely satisfies that whole defensive type uh, conditions. Now we go to the tag switch. Strike is similar. Blast, 15% chance for paralysis. That's going to be fun. Blue card, same thing. 20% damage inflicted, 20% blue card damage. Um, destroy all your cards to draw 3 new ones. Green card, draws a blast card. Restore 10% of your health, key by 50. 20% damage inflicted, reduce enemy key. His tag switch is to go into Raccoon to draw a strike card. Go to element yellow, restore 10% of your health and key by 30. 20% damage inflicted, randomly destroy a card. I'm thinking it is all the same, except now he is more blast focused. Which is what it's looking like. 60% key recovery, minus 15 to blast arts cost, but he still has uh, reduced damage received by 70%. Um, the type neutral, seal enemy special move arts, so Gilda when he shows up is able to seal up blues, which is good. Uh, the following effects occur every time when hit by an enemy's arts attack while this character is on the field. Reduce the enemy key by 10. I'm going to be honest, I'm not really sure how good that's going to be, but we'll have to see. Because you can keep applying it, it could be really good. But uh, a lot of characters just have so many means of getting key, I don't know. Uh, activation counts reset when a tag switch is performed. Inflict all enemies with the attribute downgrade minus 10 to special move. Ultimate awaken arts power for 10 counts, pretty good. Cover change against strike card, chainable with the blue. Um, it looks like this passive is the same as before. Now this time, every time he uses a blast card instead, he gets the additional 15% damage inflicted. With the minus two, with inflict all enemies with the two sub counts, whatever. Um, the following effects occur upon landing a blast arts hit, restore own key by five. Inflict all enemies with the attribute downgrade, minus 20% to health restore for 10 counts. Inflict all enemies with attribute downgrade, minus 15% to Q recovery. And then this passive is the same too. D dude, these pass the these characters have so much in their kits now. Look at what we're reading here. What the hell? It's crazy how complicated units are nowadays. It's going to be impossible to remember everything. But look at the art too. Isn't that crazy? Here's our next tag switch character, Jason Birder. I'm I don't know if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but my bad. Uh, in terms of their stats. Yeah, they're looking pretty good too. Range type. The blast attack being around 258k. It's not too bad, really. Especially for a tag switch character. Alright, let's start. Uh, standard strike blast. Plus 5% to own health restore for 15 counts upon activation. Blue card. 30% blue card damage for 3 counts. Following effects occur on hit. Charges own switch gauge by 60%. Enemies hit with a minus 1 card draw debuff for 15 counts. Green card gives them a blast card. Heal 10% of their health, 50 key, take away attribute downgrades, and 20% to damage inflicted by allies, which is really good. Your tank switch ability, go to Birder, go to Element Blue, restore 10% of your health and get 30 key, plus 20% to damage inflicted for 15 counts, restore on vanish by 70%. This right here alone might actually make these characters uh, really damn good. Jice's tank switch to Birder, this is monstrous. The 70% Vanish Restore. Z ability is Guinea Force, Episode Frieza Saga, or Frieza Force Base Strike Attack and Blast Attack, and 18% to Episode Frieza Saga Base Blast Defense. First passive, 90% damage inflicted, 65% reduced damage received, minus 10% to Blast Arts cost. Increase the switch gauge by 80%. Wow, so that means you can get the tank switch off by one card. 
Also applies the following effects to allies if there is a Ginyu Force or Episode 3 is a Saga battle member other than this character in the party. So he's also a support type. Just like uh, um, uh, Raccoon and Gildo are. 15% damage inflicted, 30% key recovery. The Ginyu Force might actually be a really, really good team. Fall effects occur when this character enters the battlefield or enters via a tag switch. You get 30 key, 30% to damage inflicted, 30% to blast damage inflicted. Uh, nullifies enemy special actions, so kind of like the Super Saiyan 3 Goku, but good. Uh, nullifies cover change. Reduce enemy key by 30, and then inflict the enemy with the downgrade plus 10% to damage received for 15 counts. Following effects occur after enemy attack is over. Store on health by 15%, activates 3 times, 20% to damage inflicted for 15 counts, 20% to special move damage inflicted for 15 counts, inflict enemy with the attribute downgrade minus 1 to card draw speed. Dude, these characters have so much going on. It's been 16 minutes and I'm only talking about a couple characters' kits. Whenever you change cover, you draw a special arts card, randomly destroy one enemy card, minus 30% to health restore for 20 counts, and you have a cover change against strike cards, which you can chain with your blue. Following effects occur according to the number of times this character strike or blast have hit. So if you hit them once with a strike or a blast card, you get 30% damage inflicted for 15 counts. Hit them twice, you draw a blue card, activate twice. Three times, inflict enemy with the attribute downgrade plus 10% to damage received. Hit count resets when character switch or attack switch is performed? Wow. Okay. Fall effects occur when an enemy uses an ultimate awakened or rising rush if you have two Ginyu Force battle members. Shorten sub count by 5, minus 40% to ultimate and awaken arts power. So just like uh, the Raccoon tag switch character. Pretty good. We'll head over to Birder. If you guys remember the EX Ginyus, Birder was the best one. So I'm expecting a lot here. Last card, Standard Strike. Last card reduces special move cost. Blue card, Massive Explode Damage. 30% to blue card damage for 3 counts. Charges his switch gauge. Oh, it's the same as uh, Jice's. Same thing with the green card. The tag switch goes to Jice. Uh, switches own element to element red. Store 10%. Oh, this is the same too, but he gets the uh, nullify cover change. Pretty good. Uh, the following effects occur when this character enters the battlefield or enters the battlefield via tank switch. Restores own key by 30, 20% damage inflicted, 30% to own key recovery. Oh, so Birder has the card draw speed, 15 counts, reduce enemy key by 30, minus 30% to key recovery, 15 counts. After the enemy attack is over, same thing as before. You get a bunch of buffs. Uh, whenever you change cover, he draws a green card. Reduces enemy Dragon Ball by one, pretty good. Kills a card too, and you have a cover change against a strike card, which you can change with a blue. The following effects occur when this character performs a vanish step. Increase on card draw speed by one level for five counts. Restores on vanish gauge by 70%. And this can be repeated over and over again, and you get nullify uh, cover change for five timer counts, and you uh, reduce Ally sub count. There is so much going on in this kit, but it honestly feels like you it's you're gonna have a hard time hitting this character. Because Jice is able to tag switch and get 70% of his vanish, and then Birder is able to restore a bunch of his vanish when he already has done a vanish. So you can repeat that over and over again. So that's gonna be painful. And he has the same passive here. So I think these guys might have a slight edge over Captain Ginyu, I think. These guys are looking fantastic. And then, the cherry on top, we have a new free-to-play Goku. Look at this art, I guess they changed the direction here. So, a yellow free character. Melee base, not too bad in terms of overall stats. Standard Strike, Blast, Blue card, Major Explode damage, 30% to blue card damage for 15 counts. Seals enemy Blast cards, pretty good. Green card, restore on key by 25, restore 50% of his vanish, and then restore an additional 20% of his vanish, only happens twice, 20% of damage inflicted, 15 counts, takes away attribute downgrades and abnormal conditions, main ability, draw strike, restore 50 key, 30% damage inflicted, permanent buff, increases card draw speed by 1 level permanently, changes his blast card into strike cards, 
Hits anti cover null for 15 counts. Z ability, strike attack and defense for sand, event exclusive, or Fiza Saga. The following effects occur when the battle starts 80% damage inflicted, 30% to damage inflicted for 60 counts, reduce damage received by 60%. Isn't that funny? Only last year, rare summonable characters had 60% reduced damage received, free characters had 50. In just a year, we already changed the notch by one level. Gets cardio speed for 60 counts, 60% to own key recovery, hits the enemy with a plus 30% to damage, receive passive, a debuff for 60 counts. When he shows up on the field, you get 40 key, 30% to damage, strike damage inflicted, and a 10% to damage inflicted buff by your allies, activates twice, pretty good. Whenever you land a strike card, you draw another strike card. Kind of like the purple 17 who got a Zenkai not too long ago. You use a card, you draw another card kind of thing. Pretty good. Activation counts whenever he switches. Uh, the enemy takes 20% strike damage received for 15 counts. Follow effects occur when enemy activates a rush. Restores allies other than this character's health by 15%. Still happens even if he dies. Shortens on self count by 10. Whenever he faces an enemy, restore 5% of his health. Randomly draw one new card when you have three or fewer. Minus three to strike guard's cost. Whenever he vanishes, he draws a green card. Restores his health by 5%. It gets 20% to strike damage inflicted while reducing enemy key. Pretty nifty, you know, vanish, get a green card. Pop the green card for not just a stop time event, but also to get your hands on your vanish back. Kind of combo your opponent, not bad. Seems okay. Overall though, I'm not surprised that the Ginyu Force is uber strong because they always do this with characters that are not the highest in terms of overall hype. Now it's not just new characters, there's also new equipment. This is the team I'm going to be using for the showcases by the way. Um, but in terms of equipment, what is new? I see you are new. This, yeah, it's the event exclusive thing, so for the Goku, that would be pretty good to farm I guess. Um. Is that it, though? I know there's you, but you're already part of the data download. This is just the exchange shop thing. Um, I don't think there's anything new. I know that there's this new Awakened Equip here. Frieza Force, Frieza Saga. Double defense. Max HP with max health restore. Pretty good for the defense type characters. But I don't think that... I think that's it. I don't think there's any new... Oh, right over here, the plat. I almost missed it. Base health, strike attack, wow, this is a pretty good uh, platinum equipment too. No surprise at all, the Ginyu Force team looks pretty formidable. But anyways, I think that's everything. All those characters are looking quite fantastic, but I think uh, Birder and Jice have the advantage. Captain Ginyu second, and then Raccoon might be third. But you let me know in the comment section below which ones look the best to you. Overall, I think they're looking pretty good. I'm excited for summons because the characters overall look great. And I'm going to make some tea because I've been talking for way too long. But anyways, be on the lookout for the showcases. But until next time, guys, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Peace.